And now I'd like to introduce Jeff Wright. He is the president of the Local 249 of the United Auto Workers. He represents over 3,700 auto workers at the Ford Clay Como Assembly Plant. And the union has a strong history of supporting social movements, so I'll let him tell you a little more. Thank you. Auto workers aren't really known for their public speaking, so bear with me. <laughs> Uh, last month, uh, the 3,750 active members of UAW Local 249 at the Kansas City Assembly Plant voted 90.2% uh, to ratify a new national contract with Ford Motor Company. Uh, now when you hear that better than 9 out of 10 uh, of the workers voted for the contract, you might assume it was a, it was a great contract. Um, that voting yes was a no-brainer. Uh, but the fact is, for my members, this was a tough contract to love. Uh, auto workers haven't had a raise since 2003. Uh, over that time, each one of us has given up over $30,000 in paying benefits. And even worse, we, we were forced to sign a contract uh, that paid entry-level workers a wage of uh, just $15 an hour. Uh, despite Ford's return to profitability and, and their lavish executive bonuses, there were few financial rewards for UAW members in this new contract. So why did my members vote yes? Because the new contract with Ford, GM, and Chrysler will bring work back to America. Uh, in a country where one in 10 workers is unemployed and millions more are underemployed, that's a big deal. According to a, a study by the Center for Automotive Research, uh, the just signed contract with the Detroit 3 uh, will create 180,000 jobs in the U.S., uh, including 20,000 here in Missouri. Uh, to put it in perspective, that's more jobs than were created nationwide in August and September this year. That's why my members were able to look past their own pocketbooks and, and vote yes for this contract. Uh, in Kansas City, Ford will invest $1.1 billion to retool the Kansas City Assembly Plant to build uh, the transit commercial van and hire 1,600 new workers. Uh, on the other side of the state, GM's going to add a second shift of truck production and uh, hire uh, 1,250 new workers to its uh, Winsville Assembly Plant. Now some people, some people say that the union movement has lost its, its usefulness. Uh, unions might have been <laughs> necessary in the past, uh, that they're outdated, a relic of the past. Uh, most of those people are Wall Street bankers, uh, corporate executives, right-wing politicians, or their apologists in the media. Uh, for, the, for those of us in the middle class, those who believe in a strong, functioning democracy, uh, the role of unions has never been more critical. Uh, the task of rebuilding the union, union movement has never been more vital. After World War II, returning soldiers, uh, sailors, and airmen, alongside women who entered the workforce during the war, built a strong and vibrant, vibrant union movement. New Deal legislation, such as the National Labor Relations Act, that gave the workers the right to organize. Unions grew rapidly as they did to negotiate uh, pensions, health care, job safety, even paid vacations. And as the union movement grew, the American middle class began to grow as well. For the first time, working men and women could buy the products they produced. They could afford to buy a home and a car. They could send their children to college. They could retire with dignity. The union movement and the middle class grew in tandem until about 1979. After Ronald Reagan broke the PATCO strike in 1981, the government refused to enforce labor laws that gave unions the right to organize. Companies learned that there was no meaningful penalty for violating labor laws. Union membership began to decline, and with it, so did the middle class. Today, the news media reports, without irony, <clears throat> that millionaires and billionaires on Wall Street are calling auto workers, teachers, and firefighters greedy because they want to collect their pensions. Millions are losing their health insurance. College students graduate with huge college loans and no prospect for a job. The fact is the economic crisis of the 1930s that led to the creation of the modern industrial union movement in the first place is being repeated today. I'll repeat that. The economic crisis of the 30s that led to the creation of the modern industrial union movement in the first place is being repeated today. All of us sense that things are out of balance. Wall Street and the corporations have too much power. They crash the economy and hire an army of lobbyists to prevent needed reform. 
Their vast wealth allows them to thwart the will of the people by buying politicians. Occupy protesters get pepper sprayed and arrested for exercising their constitutionally protected right to assemble. Bankers who commit massive fraud get multi-million dollar bonuses. Now, well, some some of you say that unions <coughs> are fine for industrial workers like myself, uh, but professionals with a college degree don't need them. I disagree. Uh, increasing, increasingly, young professionals are finding that they need unions also. My union, United Auto Workers, now represents some 30,000 academic student employees and postdoctoral researchers in California and the state of Washington. Uh, they want what we all want, a voice on the job, a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. They want job security, they want health care insurance, and they found the only way to get what they want is uh, power their numbers. Now, none of the things that we sense are going wrong in this country, like the decline of the middle class, the decline of our standards of living, the outrageous income inequality, the erosion of democracy, can be solved if we don't begin to take action. <clears throat> My guess is that if we added up all the savings of everybody in this room, there wouldn't be enough to make one good Wall Street bonus. <laughs> so it's clear we don't have enough money to change things. We don't have an army, we don't have a police force either. All we have is the power of our numbers. And that's what a union is. A group of people working together to defend themselves through the power of their numbers. Our country stands at a crossroads now. We can accept the Wall Street vision of a tiny, ultra-rich upper class ruling with an iron hand over a vast underclass. That's a future that looks a lot like present-day Mexico where we can use the power of our numbers to rebuild the, rebuild the middle class and rec reclaim our political system to make it work for every American, not just the 1%. If we choose the latter, and I'm confident we will, the model created by those returning veterans from World War II, the men and women Tom Brokaw has called the greatest generation of a broad middle class and a truly representative political system. We must restore balance by rebuilding the union movement and mobilizing the power of our numbers.